right. Welcome, kings and queens. Today we are talking the final segment of Love and Marriage Huntsville Reunion Part 3. It took me some time to get this one together. And I may be a day late and a dollar short, but let me tell you why. I wanted to outline my thoughts and do this review justice. Carlos King, you are the catalyst to a great majority of this drama. And if you would just step back and go back (laughs) to your producer's chair, opposed to fraternizing with the help, a lot of this drama could have been alleviated a long time ago. Now, I know you asked the mellow meters to leave you alone. Uh Uh-uh. We're going to stay on you. We're going to hold you accountable. Because your target demographic is African-American women, black women. And we got something to say. Period. All right, let's get into it. For those of you who are just tuning in, or if you're new to the channel, welcome to the palace. I am Queen Sheba. I cover a variety of hot topics specific to reality television. But most importantly, I hone in on the psychological and the behavioral traits of the Black experience. I'm going to start with Destiny. Okay. I'm going to start with Destiny. When they asked her, could we expect to see your man, the man, when Carlos asked her, can we expect to see the man that you're dating make an appearance on this show next season? You see her stumble over her words when asked about Moses. Child, Moses is not coming on this show. I don't think he can risk being exposed like that. And I'm going to leave that parked right there. Okay. You see how she got tripped up, kind of tripped up, trying to explain why he was not there on a reunion because of unforeseen circumstances. Uh Uh-uh, girl, you're not dealing with amateurs. Girl, these viewers are sharp. Mm -mm. You got to try that in front of a different audience, not us. But that's okay. Let's move on. Because we all know we're not going to get nothing from Destiny but defensiveness, rolling her eyes, and a bad attitude. And I cannot seem to place my finger on why, nor do I understand why Carlos tends to hang on to her. I'm missing the connection. You know, normally I can pick up, but I'm not sure of his connection with her. Now, you know, Destiny, that you were calling Martel in the wee hours of the night. I want y'all to pay attention. She never denied it. She never denied that she was calling Martel in the wee hours of the night at 1 a.m. and 5 a.m. You do the math. You make the connection as viewers. She never denied it. She deflected, but she never denied it. And I also believe a lot of her bravado is because she does not want Moses. For some reason, I want to call this man Moesis. So if I do, please forgive me. She does not want Moses to know who she really is. Oh, yeah. That's why she's quick to deflect and change the subject. She don't want Moses. Baby, she's put on an act. Okay? She's put on an act. But but we'll come back to it. Okay? She don't want that man to know who she really is. But I will tell you this uh, to everybody that's listening. And also, if you're tuned in, Moses, welcome to the channel. (laughs) I will say this, Destiny will never have an allegiance to another woman, Tisha. But the sheer fact, and and you know why? It's because the sheer fact that she didn't have a deep connection with her mother. You see, when a woman isn't able to connect with her mother and, and she does not receive extensive, intensive therapy, She will always sabotage her relationships with other women. And you better watch her, Letitia, because those type of women will devour your man. They have no allegiance. You you see her doing it with Martel. I think they called it becoming a bit too chummy. Melody picked up on it. And Melody is absolutely right to take a step back and be like, hold on, (laughs) home girl, you calling my man. At 1 a.m., 5 a.m. in the morning. Because it was still her man now. They were not divorced, whatever they were going through. Okay? 
and you getting off the phone with your friend to go talk to a man, come on, make it make sense. Make it make sense. All right. I do believe that Destiny and Martell have had an inappropriate sexual relationship. You can't tell me otherwise. I trust myself. I trust my experience. I trust my observation. She can say what she wants on that stage. Okay. And I do believe allegedly that they do hook up from time to time. Y'all know Kimmy put a shot, a stop to that bullshit. Did y'all not see, uh, it was this season, I think, how she tried to come at Maurice by attempting to connect with him with her sad story about what happened to her during COVID and what LeBeric did, what he didn't do, and how he set her up for failure and how she had to receive assistance. She went to the man. She didn't go to the woman. Why did you try to bypass Kimmy, who's the woman? She tried to pull that same bullshit with Kimmy that she did with Melody. But Kimmy wasn't having that. And peep this. We've never seen Destiny film with, sit next to, or chat with Maurice ever again since that scene. Kimmy is old school. She saw Destiny coming a mile away. She saw Destiny trying to get close to her man and shut it down, as she should have. Now, Letitia is the only one who keeps the gate open for Destiny. And Tisha, Tisha, you better watch yourself. Destiny's a very broken girl. Melody paid her ass dust on that stage. And when she and Melody were going back and forth, look at Martell's body language. He put his head down because he know that he's been with that girl. To him, it's like his two women fighting. But we'll move on. Let's talk about Letitia. Letitia, be quiet. Don't pass go. Don't collect extras. Just be quiet. You looking real bad out here. And no one in your inner circle is telling you how bad you look. Listen to this, y'all. I once had love for you. Although you've done a whole bunch of evil things. You have a dark soul. But I still don't hate you. You was like, oh, this girl is my enemy. Why do you think she has a dark soul? Yeah. She's very pretty on the outside. I hope y'all didn't miss it. Carlos asked Letitia, why do you think Melody has a dark soul? Y'all pay attention. And she replied, because she's very pretty on the outside. Got him. What does this mean in a realm of psychology and human behavior? Y'all, the heart cannot lie when it does not have a chance to rehearse. She spoke her truth in the moment for the peace that she did not have an opportunity to rehearse. All of that other stuff, I think Dustin Ross said it. Yeah, she did rehearse that. All of that, you got a dark soul, probably repeated it over and over as she was doing her mommy duties and driving back and forth to the grocery store, stood in the mirror. She had that down pat. But Carlos King, okay, Carlos King threw a monkey wrench in the plan by asking a question in the moment. We call it in a moment. And she spoke her truth. She said, because she's pretty on the outside. Ain't that something? Why do you think Melody is evil and have a dark soul? Because she's pretty on the outside. (laughs) Y'all, I can't make it up. You heard it. I did not put words in her mouth. I'm just breaking it down for you. Okay. I'm breaking it down for you. The real answer came out because she's pretty on the outside. Letitia Scott does not like Melody because of the way Melody looks. Not only that, Letitia wants Melody to marinate and wallow in sadness over her divorce. That's the real reason she hates Melody. Number one, because of the way Melody looks. Number two, because Melody will not give in to negative and defeating emotions post-divorce. And there's a strong possibility that Letitia also resents Melody because of the love and the support that Melody has around her. Let me break it down for you. You see, 
Ain't nobody stepped in to save Letitia from Marceau. Ain't nobody stepped in to offer or give Letitia a break by babysitting her children, giving her a village. In my opinion, she's very jealous of what Melody has and not necessarily financial, but by the support, the community, the village, the sisterhood, the brotherhood, the kindred ships that Melody has established along the way. Let me really break it down. Why don't we stay? We can start with a praying mother. A mother that has edified her, built her up to be independent, self-sufficient, well-rounded, articulate, self-loving, self-acceptance. Fly, go after your dreams. A mother who said, um, ever since Melody was a little girl, Melody wanted to experience the world and her mother allowed her to. But you see, Letitia's mother did the opposite. She forced marriage on Marcel. Melody's mother said, you know what? Hold off on marriage. You just graduated. Experience the world. Travel a little bit. Have a little fun. Uh-uh. Not Miss Wanda. Miss Wanda forced the hand of Marcel. Y'all better look at the psychological and the behavioral traits, which in this case leads to jealousy, resentment, and hate. And that's why Letitia and Destiny have connected in the manner that they have, y'all. There's a commonality, hate, hate, resentment, because they both have had the similar experiences with their mothers. Okay, now that's a topic that we rarely cover because black mothers tend to be off limits. We don't talk about toxic black mothers and how they can ruin a child. Okay, but we see it playing out on national television every single day. We can start with Miss Wanda. We can look at Mama D and Scrappy and the list goes on and on and on. I do believe that Marcel may be capable of being a very healthy man, or he has been in the past. However, I've said it before, and I will continue to be consistent in my message, and I'll say it again. I do not believe that Marcel does not love his wife. I think he loves his wife. I just don't believe he's in love with his wife based off of his external behaviors. He may love her but I do not believe based on his behaviors that he is in love with her. And let's not put it on the longevity of the marriage, okay? If we really want to keep it real, if we really want to talk openly and honestly like we do over here in the palace, I don't think the man has ever had an opportunity from go to pick and choose and marry the type of woman that he would have chosen for himself once he matured as a young man, Big Mouth, Miss Wanda, found an opportunity of a lifetime for her daughter when he, impregn- when he impregnated Tisha, okay? When Tisha became pregnant, in my opinion, Miss Wanda saw that as an opportunity for her daughter to be connected with somewhat of a well-rounded man from a decent background. And guess what? She hounded his ass like a bulldog, okay? And she forced that man's hand to marry her child. And if you notice, she never refers to teacher Tisha in the adult phase, the adult state. She says, my baby, my child, okay? Hmm. Let me get a little bit deeper, and then I'll move on. When Miss Wanda allegedly forced the hand of Marcel to choose Letitia. Not only did that establish legitimacy for Letitia, but it also helped Miss Wanda to recoup her messed up reputation as an absentee teen mother. Y'all still there? You following me? There's a lot riding on this marriage. And it's not on the behalf of Marcel. Come on now. If we're going to talk about it, let's talk about it. Letitia and her mother 
are clinging on to this marriage for dear life. They need this marriage. This marriage is everything that neither one of them have ever had. Acceptance, notoriety, likeness, value, connection, recognition, association. You get my drift? Both Letitia and Destiny are professional victims because they've never healed from the trauma of the emotional abandonment they both have experienced by way of their mothers. Oh, that was a lot. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. I unleashed with that one. Let's move on to Martell. Martell is a bold-faced liar. I'm not going to even give him a lot of press and a lot of time today, okay? But he's a bold-faced liar, and he lied about hacking Melody's phone. Let me tell you something. Any man that can have and establish a relationship outside of his marriage, outside of his vows, outside of his commitment, and keep up that for five years or longer, wow. Martel is a hell of a liar, a deceiver, a manipulator. Martel irks my effing soul. Did you hear him tell Melody? At least I am still friends with people. This Negro behaves like a grown boy. His only concern is establishing acceptance by way of narcissism. I will not waste any more time on him. We got to move on. The rest of my commentary. Ooh, y'all ready? <laughs> I'm going in. The remainder of my commentary will be specifically focused on Carlos King. I have a bone to pick with you. But first, let me ask you, Carlos, what are you doing? What are you doing? You are becoming very unprofessional with this cast. Okay? And you use the phrase that you're a different kind of producer because you care for your cast. I guess that was a dig at Andy. Okay? But Andy actually does a really good job. He, he has his slip-ups. And when he does, and when the viewers get on his behind, he comes out and he makes an apology. See, that's the difference. Okay, it's perfectly okay to care, but know when you are not the end all be all. Okay, and if you were really going to have that conversation with Martel, if you really care about your cast like you say you do, you should have had a qualified individual there by way of a psychotherapist and or a family therapist on that stage. And I'm not even saying Dr. Francis, y'all. I think that red-headed lady, the white lady from, um, damn. Oh, I, family or fiance, she's sharp as hell. She does not play. Next time, bring her up there because you are not qualified to have that conversation. You are not qualified to have that conversation. I don't give a damn how much you think you care. You're out of your league. You're out of your wheelhouse. You're not a subject matter expert in human behavior, emotional trauma. None of that. Stay away from it. And I'll give you one reason why you're not qualified to have it. And this may piss some of you off, but I'm going to say it. First reason is you're, you're too close emotionally. You've become too emotionally invested in the cast. That's the first thing. The second thing, hell, you're too emotionally invested in Martell. Ray Charles can see that. Okay. When you sit there and you initiate that type of conversation, your job is to remain stoic and professional at all times. Hell, you cry more than Martel. Martel had to give you the tissue. You can't do that, Carlos. It's out of line and it's unethical by way of psychology. What you did is you staged an intervention and I get it, but you were not supposed to lead it. Here's why I say that. In addition to what I do in my day-to-day -day job, my nine-to-five, I am also a certified coach through ICF, 
That's the International Coaching Federation. I coach executives. One thing they taught us to never do is to become emotional because you make the end user, the person that you're coaching, responsible for your emotions. And when you started crying, the cast, you place them in a position subconsciously where they became responsible for your emotions. And I'll tell you how. Did you see how Martel, instead of him taking the tissue for himself, he gave it to Carlos? Because in that moment, Carlos's emotions were important. And Carlos, it became more about you and not about them. And another, and another thing, see that lady with the red hair from that show, marriage or fiance would have sat there. Oh, she would have drove that conversation, baby. I would have loved that. Carlos, you got to start thinking outside the box and you also got to have people around you. Is everybody intimidated by you? That's the first thing. Who holds you accountable? Who gives you feedback, performance reviews? And another thing, if you're so worried about Martel Carlos King, I said I was going in today. If you're so worried about Martel, then you need to remove him from the show effective immediately. Here's why I say that. You went on record. You shared in your interview, your post interview with Dustin Ross, that you were worried that Martel could possibly pose harm to himself or hurt himself. You were afraid or concerned that Martel would do something to himself. You're in violation by allowing him to continue to come to work. It's called fit for duty, honey. It's a psychological assessment. He is no longer fit for duty, according to your admission. It's now public information by way of an interview and a discussion that you've had on social media. <laughs> you yourself said that you're afraid he can harm himself. At any time as a leader in any organization, corporate America, reality, television, own network, you name it. When you discover there's a threat of harm that someone could possibly hurt themselves or someone else, they are no longer fit for duty. You're being negligent, Carlos. And maybe people are afraid to call you to the carpet and hold you accountable and keep you honest. But you're making a huge mistake. Martel needs to go, and he needs to go ASAP. You as an executive producer said that you are worried he is going to hurt himself. Why in the hell is he still on the show? Okay? Legally, you can require him to go to therapy if he plans to remain on the show. It's called fit for duty. You refer him to a behavioral health program. And guess what? If he remains on the show... He signs over his HIPAA rights. Y'all, this is perfectly legal, Carlos. Let me turn you on to game. He signs over his HIPAA rights. His therapist will share with you what's going on in the sessions and how he's progressing. It's perfectly legal. In order for him to maintain employment with own network, that he has to enter into a behavioral health, uh, you know, employee assistance program immediately. And here are some things that you can work with the provider. You fill out a form. You tell them what you're looking for. They get him in. They tell you when he comes, when he shows up, if he doesn't, um, all of that good stuff. Okay. So I just gave you some free game. But to allow him to come on the show because you have an affection and an affinity for him is negligent. Because if anything happens here on out, You've made us privy to your concerns regarding his uh, dangerous behaviors and also his inability to think and behave rationally. You hold full responsibility from here on out. And another question I have for you, Carlos, when did you discover that he was a threat to himself? Was it before or after this conversation? (laughs) <laughs> I heard it was down basement and that, yep, Martel versus Kenya. To know that something may have went down with Martel and Kenya, one thing we know about Martel, Martel speaks his mind. Unlike most of the husbands on the show, Martel speaks his mind and he goes off on anybody that he feels is going off on him. We've seen it on my show, Love and Marriage Huntsville, and Martel speaks his mind. He's a Capricorn. He pledged the fraternity Kappa Alpha Psi. So 
to know that him and a Titan like Kenya had a moment. Oh, I, I can't wait. He's going to make sure that these women know, like, I, I'm not the husbands y'all used to. Like, I am going, if y'all go gutter, I am going um, <laughs> Jason, Friday the 13th, basement on ya. Okay? Martel ain't the one to play with. He's not. He's not. And Martel is one of the best male force multipliers on reality television. I don't think <laughs> those peaches are ready for the likes of Martel Hope. Now look, Martel is still, I wanna make it very clear, my loves. Martel is still very much a part of the love and marriage Huntsville universe. So, you know, he went over there to play with the girls for a second, that's cute. So the only thing I'm going to say is, <laughs> buckle up, cause I can't wait to get my hands on Sheree Whitfield in Huntsville. <laughs> Stay tuned. So was it before or after this conversation? Because in this conversation, you were egging on that dangerous behavior. You were egging on for him to carry his behind over there to Bravo and do exactly what he does. Terrify, bully, act out. You laughed about it. Why are you exploiting his misbehavior for your own profit? If this man is a wild card, then why are you inciting disruption? Why have you not stepped in sooner, own network? Why do you continually make Melody responsible for his behavior? Hmm? I, I have a lot of questions. When you, when you say things like, there's some things I found out that were happening to Melody and I told her, call me. How come you didn't call me? I never knew. Call me when this happens. Um, no, that's not her job. That's your job. And that's own network's job to monitor and manage your talent. That's not Melody's job. Martell is your job. Your job is to remove anyone that poses a threat to the well-being of the other members of the cast even your producers, even if they pose a threat to your producers. Did he not put his hands on a producer and push them to the floor? But yet he's still here. How much more do, do you need? How much data on his behavior do you need to collect before you rem remove him as not fit for duty? Does your affinity and your affection for this man outweigh your ability to be logical? And reasonable. And, 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 and another thing. <laughs> this is the second time that I've witnessed you insult Melody and her roles and responsibilities in this relationship when she was married to him as a wife. That's none of your damn business. Which is why I said if we're going to have this conversation regarding what happened in their marriage, what happened in their bedroom, then you should have had a qualified individual there. Why are you still talking about what happened with them? They are two years, over two years divorce. Okay. So it sounds like Martel needs a, let me stop. It sounds like Martel needs a storyline. I'll get to that in a minute. Not Melody. Okay. You keep trying to tie Melody to Martel. You keep trying to bring her back to a toxic and dark relationship that she was able to break free of. Okay. It looks like you're being messy and you're stirring the pot on the behalf of Martel. And let me tell you why I say that. Because I have not heard you challenge nor imply the other women were not good enough for their husbands. I've never heard you tell Letitia that the reason Marceau talks so bad to her and went to Africa and got his big back on a photo and allegedly cheats is because she's not enough. Maybe you're not enough. Maybe you're not the full thing. Okay? I never heard you say that. No. I've never heard you imply to Kimmy that maybe the possibility of rumors of, of, of Credit One and uh, what, what do they call them? Y'all said linebackers is because she's not putting it down like she's supposed to. 
No, you avoid putting the Scots out there. You act like you see none of that. That's, that's, you're completely hands off when it comes to that. But you're very blatantly disrespectful, okay, when you do that to Melody. And not only have you done it once, but you've done it twice. You know what? Let me refresh your memory. Let's take a look at the first time. I'm not gonna put words in your mouth. Thank, and, thank you. And, and, thank you, you. And, you can, and you can you can you can cuss me out and stop me if, when I say this. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. So I'm not. It uh, it seems to me that you were in love with two women at the same time, and that you just weren't enough for him to love all that all at once. I was enough. I would never accept. We keep track of everything. You insinuated that Melody was an, was not enough woman for her man. Because you said, could it be you're not enough? And she checked your ass. And the second time you did it was here on this stage, insinuating yet again that Melody was not enough because her career took her away from her wifely duties and maybe she didn't do what she should have been doing in a home. And then she had to justify herself. Melody, I wish you would not have answered that damn question. That ain't none of his damn business. Okay. I would have shut him down. That ain't none of your business. Okay. You've been doing too much pillow talking with Martel because you getting stuck in what used to be. Melody has moved on. Zip it shut, Carlos. Because you said opposite on Bell Collective reunion. But when it comes to Melody Cherie, you have the audacity to fix your mouth to say, well, you kind of insinuate it's her fault. We know you don't like her. We peeped that a long time ago. Oh, yeah. You were quick to say that you're going to put away the rumors of the Scotch cheating. You don't want to hear it no more. I think that's a great idea. Put it away. But you also need to put away your necessity to pry and get all up the melodies of Martell's post-marital business. As a matter of fact, Why do you keep honing in on that as opposed to honing in her life, as opposed to honing in on her life post-divorce, as if she doesn't have a successful skincare line that you could be featuring on this reunion or her master classes that you could be featuring on this reunion or her TV shows, huh? Acting roles, huh? We'll wait. She's been divorced for over two years now. Leave it alone. Keep that same energy on both sides. We know you don't like her. We peeped that a long time ago. It comes out. It oozes out through your veins. But what I'm not going to do is let you play in our face. If you think I'm here to play-